Pollock is a phenomenon and belief that defines the experience of improbable events, whether they be positive or negative ones. GFRIEND was a girl group that came from an unknown company trying to make a name for themselves in an oversaturated industry. These six girls built their careers from the ground up and managed to become one of the biggest girl groups of their generation. When asked how they were able to achieve this level of success, their CEO simply answered, luck is the key. Hi everyone and welcome back to Midnight Theories and if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. Today we are diving deep into the inspirational story of GFRIEND, a girl group that came from nothing but set the bar with their talent and hard work. You may have heard GFRIEND's story echoed a few times on the platform, but you've never heard it like this. When you hear the name Source Music, big names like GFRIEND and The Seraphim come to mind. But before Source Music gained status and was acquired by HYBE in 2019, one of the largest Korean entertainment companies, they were a small company struggling to support their artists. Source Music was founded in 2009 by CEO Sa Sung Jin. He first started his career in the entertainment industry working under SM Entertainment from 2000 to 2002. At the company, he managed several big names such as BOA, Shinwa, and Fly to the Sky. While working with Shinwa, SM CEO Lee Soo Man promoted Sa to a production-related position. However, it didn't last long as Sa Sung Jin moved to JYP Entertainment. Once again, Sa took a manager position for the singer Byol. At JYP, Sa had the opportunity to join a project group called M6, a six-member boy group made up of six managers of prominent singers G.O.D., Rain, Seven, and more. M6 performed their song, No Smoking Song, on NBC Music Camp and received a positive response from their audience. So Sung Jin knew he had more to offer to the world and left JYP and transferred to H2 Entertainment, where he met former Baby Box member Kan Myon. Soon after, he left the company and founded Source Music, where he acquired the company's first artist Kan Myon to manage her solo career. At this time, Source Music was unable to afford a building, let alone hire enough staff members. That was until CEO Sa Sung Jin was offered a helping hand by one of his close friends he met while working at JYP, producer Pang Shi Hyuk. You see, Source Music and Big Hit go way back. With the help of Big Hit CEO Pang Shi Hyuk, Source Music was able to run through a small basement in the same building as Big Hit that consisted of one practice room, two vocal rooms, and the CEO's office. Together, Source Music and Big Hit debuted their first girl group Glam in 2012. Glam was produced by Big Hit and managed by Source Music. However, the girl group was producing unfavorable results. Both companies could not afford the failure of Glam and continued to seek new talent. While trying to find their place in the industry, Source fell time and time again with short-lived groups like AA, Mio, and Eden Beats. But Sa decided to give it one last shot. The first member of GFRIEND to join Source Music was Kim So Jung, or better known by her stage name Soan. Soan was a former trainee under DSP Media the home of some of the biggest girl groups in the industry such as Binko, Kara, April, and my personal favorite, Rainbow. Soen has always had a passion for music and started taking steps towards her future career early on in her life. She learned the piano, attended a dance academy, participated in cheerleading, and was one of the only members to attend Hanlim Multi-Art School, where she graduated from the modeling department. In the three and a half years she trained under DSP, she was considered a star trainee and appeared in various DSP media content including Rainbows To Me. She also trained alongside the future members of co-ed group CARD. While at DSP, she ran into several setbacks where the company had to postpone several upcoming activities, which included her debut. There were many times where she wanted to give up because the process of debuting was taking too long and she thought that it was not the right path for her, but thankfully she persevered. In 2013, Soen auditioned for Source Music and surprisingly passed with her rapping skills. Soen trained for another year and a half. This gave her a total of five years as a trainee. In the process of creating GFRIEND, Soen's stage name was originally PB, which stood for Perfect Body, or BB, which stood for Fine Beauty. She eventually adopted the name Soan and became GFRIEND's leader. The next to join Source Music was Jung Yedin the only member to use her real name. Yedin was a former Fantasio and Cube trainee that produced groups such as Astro, Weki Miki, and 4Minute, and CLC respectively. From a very young age, Yedin dreamed of becoming a singer. However, her parents were strongly against the idea. Yedin is one of the members who spoke very candidly about her rough past to becoming an idol. On an episode of SBS Same Bed, Different Dreams, a son who was going through puberty and a concerned mom were invited on the show. Yedin shared, when I was younger, I was hurt when I told my mom I was going to be a singer, and she responded by saying, go into your room and study. 
After that, I couldn't say my dream was to become a singer. When people asked me what I wanted to do when you grow up, I let I wanted to become a nurse. The lack of parent support can be hurtful. The only family member who supported her dream was her older brother who eventually convinced her parents to let her pursue a path in the music industry. From there, her parents granted her permission to join SOPA, the School of Performing Art, just like many aspiring Korean singers and actors and eventually landed a spot in Source Music where she debuted as g Friends lead dancer. It is said that as soon as Yeon joined the company, she and Soan got along instantly and even exchanged school uniforms to take a picture. The third to join was Hwang Eun Bi, better known by her stage name Shin Bi, which stood for mystery. Unlike her member Yeren, Shin Bi's parents were very supportive of her starting a career in the entertainment industry and enrolled her in a dance academy where she met her future member Unha. There is also a video clip of elementary age Shin Bi dance battling the members of Big Bang. <laughs> From there, she modeled for children's school uniforms and starred in a children's show called The Fairies in My Arms. As she got older, she trained under Big Hit and Low End Entertainment before transferring to Source Music, making her trainee period four years. Sinbi's past dance experience earned her a spot in Jifren as the group main dancer. Kimya Wan, better known as Omji, was the only member of Jifren to be street casted. One day, Omji was walking on the streets when the CEO spotted her and immediately rushed to his car to bring her a business card. Omji had always had a bright future ahead of her. She came from a wealthy family as her father was the CEO of a well-known dentist company. As a result, Omji went to an English preschool, which made her one of the only members who could speak English fluently. Omji passed her audition with flying colors and had one of the shortest training periods out of all the members. Just like her other members, many stage names were thrown around, but the CEO loved the name Omji, which stood for thumb, as it was the name of a character from one of his favorite mangas titled Alien Team of Fear. Omji expressed that she initially hated the name and wanted to go by a different name, but ultimately, her fate was sealed as Omji, g Friends Magne. Three days after Omji officially made it into Source Music, Che Yuna, better known as Yuju, joined the company. Yuju has always been multi-talented and destined for stardom. At a young age, Yuju knew she wanted to become a singer and was destined to make her dream a reality. She first started posting covers on YouTube and eventually auditioned on a singing competition show called K-Pop Star, where she failed the first round. Former YG CEO Young Hyun Suk praised her singing skills, but on the other hand, Park Jun Young of JYP said she had a plain and common voice. This was only a small hiccup in her path to becoming a singer. She eventually auditioned for other companies such as Cube and Loan Entertainment, but eventually found her home at Source Music, where she debuted as the group's main vocalist. At this point, Source Music had already finalized its debut lineup with the addition of two other members. One of them was Dias Jenny, who was in fact in G-Friend's debut lineup, but terminated her contract with Source Music for unknown reasons. The other member was an unknown trainee. Now that the debut team was finalized, here came the fun part, picking out the group's name. Creating a group name is not an easy task. The general rule of thumb is to never add the number of members in the group name and not to create some weird abbreviation. Basically, don't make it look like a password. Before G-Friend was G-Friend, the company had some other names in mind, such as Guardian Angel, Hug Hug, and World Peace. Personally, looking at the list, G-Friend was the best choice, but that's just me. The name G-Friend contained the double meaning of wanting to be a lovely girlfriend to men and a close girlfriend to women, but also contained the desire to remain with the public forever with good music like a friend who is always with you. In 2016, the group were guests on KBS Cool FM, where they shared, Our name was given to us by our CEO. After our group name was confirmed as G-Friend, we felt gloomy for half a day. We felt like the name didn't fit us, and simply the word itself made us cringe. Now that we promote with a strong faith in ourselves, we have grown to embrace our group name. G-Friend may have not liked their group name. However, a group of music experts, such as music critics, publicity managers for music agencies, and record distributors, selected G-Friend to be the best name for an idol group in 2016. They said, although it's common for idol groups' names to be written in English, G-Friend seems to be highly appreciated for being a friendly name that is rare in Korea. The fully formed G-Friend moved into their shared dorms. Just like any group who came from a small agency, the girls had to deal with some poor living conditions that lacked the space to accommodate all the members. On top of this, they had a practice in the basement level of the company. They said that because they practiced for hours in the basement, they never knew if it was day or night. It also made them really sad. At this time, Source Music had only 5 employees and couldn't afford full-time dance and singing instructors, so the girls had to learn by themselves. It was also rumored that only 2 of the members received training and had to teach the others. On top of this, the girls were not allowed to use their personal cell phones and were on an extremely restrictive diet. 
In 2018, Jifrin appeared as a guest on a radio show where Omji shared the members were instructed to not eat a single grain of rice, except Soan. Soan shared she was the only member who wasn't put on a diet, so she ate whatever she wanted. But after seeing the members only eat salads for every meal, she decided to join them as a supportive leader. Jifrin were expected to make their debut in October of 2014. They even finished filming their debut music video. However, the date was postponed as the company faced some unexpected challenges. At this time, Source Music's first girl group Glam was slammed with controversy as two of the members were involved in the infamous blackmailing scandal that involved actor Lee byung Hun. And on top of this, an unknown trainee who was in the debut lineup, referred to as Miss A, had quit Jifrin right before their debut. Miss A signed a short-term training contract with Source Music in 2013. She received living accommodations and singing and dancing lessons while she was a trainee. One day, Miss A said she wanted to go home and quit, never returning to the agency. Source Music agreed to terminate her contract only if she complied with the penalty of paying twice the amount to Source Music that they invested in her. When Miss A did not pay the penalty, Source Music took legal action in 2014. During the trial, Source Music demanded a total of 55.7 million won, which is close to 43,000 USD. 12.47 million won came from the double of the cost of training education and 43.22 million won was added for her accommodation rental and delaying the group's debut. Miss A protested that Source Music had an issue with her appearance and excluded her from practice. She was instructed to lose weight which was impossible to achieve in a short amount of time that she was given and couldn't follow through with it. The court ruled that because Miss A did not return to practice, she breached her contract and was instructed to pay the double investment by contract. However, she did not have to pay the additional 43.22 million won for delaying the group's debut. Now down to five members, Source Music anxiously looked for another vocalist. This was a very difficult time for the members as their debut was stripped right from under them. However, their luck was soon to change. Chung Eun Bi, better known as Unha, was the last to join Jifren. Unha was a child actress and model who enjoyed singing and dancing. As her love for music grew, she was enrolled in the same dance academy as Shin Bi and became close friends. Unha continued to pursue a music career in her teens and left acting behind. By the age of 15, she auditioned and trained under Low in Entertainment, not Big Hit. Rumors have spread that Unha was a big hit trainee like Shin Bi, but Unha was never in Big Hit. There is also a low-end promotional poster that included Unha that proves this. Unha took a short break from training consistently and devoted more time into her studies as recommended by her parents. However, not too long after, Unha received an unexpected invitation to audition for a vacant spot in an upcoming girl group. Turns out, a low-end employee recommended Unha to source music. The members shared that because there was only one practice room, auditions were usually held there. When an audition was taking place, the remaining members had to either go out and take a walk or wait in one of the vocal rooms until it was over. Omji said that when Unha auditioned, the members hid in the vocal rooms and were impressed with what they heard. As soon as Unha passed her auditions, she was officially transferred to Source Music and trained for two months, becoming the group's lead vocalist. While re-preparing for their debut, the group was briefly mentored by former Babybox member Kan Mion, a first-generation girl group member and former Source Music solo artist, and Jifren also met with the members of Orange Caramel, Teen Top, and soloist Pak Boram, who gave them tips for their debut. Now that their final lineup was complete and well-prepared, they were ready to take the world by storm. Jifren put their training to the test and made their official debut on January 15, 2015 with their first EP, Seasons of Glass. The EP was supported by their lead single, Glass Bead, which started their school trilogy. Glass Bead flawlessly captured what would be Jifren's signature sound and choreography. Unless you were an avid Jifren fan, you would know that Glass Bead was one of the three songs picked to debut with. The other two were Shy Boy and my personal favorite Monday Blues that was very reminiscent of second gen girl group songs and had that tiara sound to it. Like come on, they even had the cat ears. If you listen to the two other songs, they are completely different compared to Glass Bead. The two songs that were destined for obscurity finally found their time to shine at Jifren's first solo concert in 2019 where the members were separated into two units, Hug Hug and World Peace. Since Soan joined the company first, she was the first to hear and practice Shy Boy, the debut song, which later switched to Monday Blues, where later additions Omji and Yuju practiced after joining the company. Unha being the last addition to the group, had no idea the two songs even existed until she saw the other members dancing to them. Jifren was a refreshing addition in K-pop, evoking the innocence of youth and the pains of growing up and finding love. Of course, 
cute schoolgirl concepts have been done time and time again. However, the six-member girl group made it distinctively their own. The group aimed for a subtle bright look with minimal makeup and brought back the classic innocent concept reminiscent of girl groups from the 90s such as SES and Finkel, but as well as second generation girl group Girls' Generation. When coming up with G-Friend's concept, the CEO noted while searching internet blogs that nostalgic girl groups from the 90s gave him a general idea for the niche that he and his team were aiming for, since they were already set on casting middle-slash-high school aged girls for the group. Debuts don't necessarily dictate whether a group will become popular. However, G-Friend established themselves as a force to be reckoned with by topping several charts. The album debuted at number 12 on the Gaon Weekly charts, peaked at number 9 on the Gaon Album charts, sold 10,000 units, and the MV ranked at number 9 on the top 10 most viewed K-pop videos around the world. Oh, and let's not forget, Billboard named G-Friend one of the top 5 K-pop artists to watch in 2015. While their debut looked like a positive experience on the charts, the girls were hit with unexpected criticism far before their debut. When Source Music dropped the members' teaser photos, Shinbi caught much attention for her visuals as many netizens said she looked like a clone of Jessica from Girls' Generation, also known as SNSD. This put Jifrin on the fandom's radar and criticism only amplified after the release of their music video Glass Bean. So on's Girls' Generation fandom saw similarities between Glass Bead and Girls' Generation's debut song, Into the New World, and began comparing both music videos. While both songs have a few similarities, they were still totally different. They also started to call G-Friend SNSD ripoffs and SNSD wannabes. The comparisons only continue to extend to other groups such as veteran girl group A Pink and the freshly debuted Lovelies in April. Despite the constant comparison, Jifren released their second EP, Flower Bud, with the lead single, Me Gustas Tu. On July 23, 25th, Me Gustas Tu is the second song in the group's school series and represents a trip during summer vacation. Jifren kept their useful bubbly image and stayed consistent with their power purity concept. The name Power Purity derived from the image of a bright and lively girl group with sharp and intense choreography that was unusual for a girl group with an innocent concept. For this comeback, it was obvious that the group was given a bigger budget. There were several outfit changes and different filming locations. This was thanks to the group's CEO. The entertainment industry is a difficult wall to overcome for a small entertainment company like Source Music. Source Music's CEO was ambitious and determined to make Jifren a household name. After the group's debut, Sosung Jin mortgaged his house and took out a hefty personal loan from his in-laws with the promise that he would close down Source Music if the comeback was not profitable. Keep in mind, Jifren was still considered a Nugu group at this time, since they were a group from a relatively unknown company and struggling financially. On the same EP, a title track, My Buddy, named after the group's fandom, was included. This song was intended to be a farewell song for the few fans they had. Each K-pop group has a fan cafe, essentially a message board or forum for idols to interact with their fans. It is said that in the beginning, only 30 people had joined the group's fan cafe, but it basically consisted of the group's family members and company staff. Me Gustas Du was a huge gamble that paid off. As time passed, Jifren's popularity steadily grew and the members continued to promote their album on various music shows and festivals. However, one performance in particular accelerated the group's popularity at an unimaginable rate. In September of 2015, Jifin attended an event where they were required to perform despite dangerous stage conditions. While performing their latest release, the members suffered repeated falls due to the stage being covered in rainwater. Even before the performance, the members were concerned with the puddles and tried to clear the water from the center of the stage. Me Gustas Du is already a difficult choreography to perform, but now adding the element of a wet stage was only a disaster waiting to happen. Unable to maintain traction on stage, the members repeatedly fell. Specifically, Yuju suffered the most as she alone fell several times and was left with a number of bruises on her legs. Fans who saw the performance expressed outrage at the organizers who allowed the girls to step on stage when it was clearly slippery. On the other hand, Jifren were applauded for the impressive level of professionalism for pushing through the performance. Like their debut song said, I may seem like a clear glass bead, but I won't break that easily. Days after the incident, Source Music released a statement that the members tried their best to finish the performance, and despite the poor stage conditions, none of the members who fell were hurt. However, their choreographer Park Jun hee said otherwise. The infamous performance was captured through a fan camp posted on YouTube and instantly went viral internationally, bringing 3 million views in a matter of days and currently sits at over 16 million views as of today. In an episode of Radio Star, Yuju explained the situation in more detail. 
We felt, but there were also many swarms of bugs. I hated the feeling of them crunching under my feet. Every time we felt, it felt like a moss was stuck on our legs. She also commented on the internationally viral video. Because of this, we got written about by foreign press. There was an article that said when people watch this clip, everyone will gain self-confidence. GFRIEND members also shared what they learned from those falls. They said, We didn't become successful because we fell. We became successful because we got back up. GFRIEND became the center of attention with their virality and Me Gusta Stu climbed back up the charts at number 8. When the members became aware of their international popularity from the video, GFRIEND became thankful to the fan who filmed it. To close the chapter on 2015, GFRIEND ended the year with a bang. GFRIEND received their first ever major award for their debut EP, Seasons of Glass, as the best new female artist at the Mellon Music Awards. This was only the beginning as the group continued to sweep rookie records left and right between 2015 to early 2016. Chiefin were also selected by an overwhelming number of votes as the best rookies of 2015 among all groups who debuted that year. This title was especially meaningful because they were selected by music experts who directly influenced the music industry such as music agencies, composers, broadcaster PDs, and music critics. To add to their accolades, they were the only girl group nominated in 2015 for the MTV Europe Music Awards for the Best Korean Act category alongside boy groups such as B184, BTS, GOT7, and VIX. Jifun's career kept booming right before everyone's eyes in such a short amount of time. It really looked as if they were destined to succeed. After charming the hearts of the public with Me Gustas Tu, Jifun's third EP was much anticipated. On January 25, 2016, Jifun released their third EP titled Snowflake with their best performing single to date, Rough. was the final song in the group's school series and represented the end of the school year. Ruff became one of the most memorable eras of the group for their dynamic choreography and music. The music video also captivated their fans with their storytelling that was inspired by the anime film The Girl Who Left Through Time. The Korean title literally translates to Running Through Time. The reception was phenomenal. The fan cafe gained 10,000 more members and reached 30,000 members in total. At this time, this was the fastest a girl group achieved such a milestone. While promoting the song, the girls hit another major milestone in their career and won their first ever music show. To make the win even more memorable, Yerin was an MC on the show. Not only did the group receive their first ever music win with Roth, but collected a total of 15 wins in multiple triple crowns during promotions. This was the second most win for a girl group of all time, the first being A Pink with 17 wins for their song Love. When the CEO was asked about the group's success with Ruff, he said, Honestly, I'm not too sure why it did so well. I believe that the falling incident really gave us a lot of public exposure. Jifun continued to see success with Ruff as the song impressively surpassed the 100 million stream mark on the con charts, their second song to do so with Me Gusta Stu being the first. This achievement earned Jifun the title of double 100 million streamers. Ruff has an overall anime-like feel to it that Source Music felt female fans would find appealing, and since his staff suggested that it is essential to develop a female fanbase in order to survive in the long run, they decided to go ahead with promotional activities for the song. Jifun not only grew a massive female fandom, but they were well known for having a diverse fanbase across gender and age. Just look at their 2016 Dream Concert performance where they performed their school trilogy mashup. You've already heard of Black Oceans, where fandoms from other groups turn off their light sticks to protest slash boycott a group. But here, Jifun received a Rainbow Ocean. <laughs> and yes, this happened on more than one occasion. Jifun stole the hearts of every group's fandom in the audience, a huge feat for a rookie group. While the members continued to promote and do activities, Jifun were invited to perform at a water park. This specific performance earned Jifren another viral moment, as the girls performed flawlessly in the rain. While it was already lightly raining before their performance began, it only got worse before suddenly becoming a downpour closer to the end of their set list. Jifren powered through and continued to perform all four songs. Netizens once again applauded their professionalism and only made the public love them more. Jifren continued to see success with their mini album Snowflake as it had ranked in enough revenue from their previous albums that the company was finally able to acquire the first floor of the building but still kept the basement level for the practice rooms. Source also used the money to make some improvements and renovations to the building. 
When asked if the company had treated them any differently after the success, the girls shook their heads in response and said nothing changed. If anything, the agency became tougher so that the group could achieve greater results. As g became more prominent in the industry, they were in higher demand and had various opportunities to collaborate with other artists. In May, g and BTS were selected as ambassadors for the second annual Family Love Day campaign sponsored by the Korean National Council on Social Welfare. The campaign aimed to encourage citizens to establish stronger family bonds, designating Wednesday as a day that families could set aside to spend much needed quality time together. With these collaborations, fans received this banger of a song. In June, an announcement was made that Jifun would star alongside Mamamoo in a new season of Showtime, a program that documents the group's daily lives as they bond and do challenges together. Jifun's careers continue to soar with their first studio album, LOL. Jifun graduated from their school concept and entered a new era with Navarella. Navarella gave the girls more individual styles, but was still consistent with their matching uniform concept. What was great about this era was the members always looked like they were enjoying themselves, showing their personalities, and the song fits them perfectly. Just like their fashion styles were changing in subtle ways, the song also incorporated fresh sounds that complemented Jifren's solid vocals. To commemorate the release of their first studio album, g held a showcase where they performed all the songs off their album. They also expressed that they had never expected to have four consecutive hit songs and were actually nervous about releasing the single. Because g had released three songs that did unprecedentedly well on the charts, there was pressure to outdo themselves each comeback. When g were asked about their impression of Navarella, they initially had reservations about the song and worried if it would do well compared to their previous singles. The album accumulated more than 60,000 pre-orders worldwide, while the song won 14 wins, achieving the record for the most number of awards won on a music show in 2016. From the beginning, Jifun established what would be their signature sound and image, but some netizens felt like it was starting to get repetitive. When Jifun were asked what their opinion was, someone responded positively. I think we like that people think that way. It hasn't been two years since we debuted, but the very fact that many people can think, this feels like G-Friend, or this sounds just like a G-Friend song. So I think we're actually happier that people think that way. Within a short time span, g cemented themselves as one of the biggest 13 girl groups. This is no easy feat, especially for an artist outside of the big three. A lot of people like to downplay g choreography to seem simple and easy, but it's everything but that. Jifun are known for having some of the sharpest, synchronized, polished, and complex choreography out of most K-pop groups, and yes, that includes boy groups. They are also well known for pulling off these complex dance moves at double the speed and blindfolded. <laughs> Thanks to the choreographer Pak Jun Hee, the mother of the Power Innocent concept. Pak is well loved by G Friend and vice versa. She has worked with G Friend since the beginning, being one of their biggest supporters. G Friend continued to show that they were a girl group still on the rise with their much anticipated fourth EP, The Awakening. The group reached new personal bests, surpassing 100,000 pre orders, breaking their previous record of 60,000 for their studio album LOL. As much as we love G Friend for their powerful, innocent image, this concept isn't sustainable. During the showcase for Navarella, Unhap Peace stands by saying, Sexy was their future, and they delivered this with their new single. Awakening teased the arrival of change. Jifun traded in their school uniforms for a soldier inspired attire and entered an interstellar battle royale with the album single fingertip. <laughs> Tip divided fans for its funky synth pop track and fierce concept. While musical growth and expanding their discography is usually a good thing, Fingertip underperformed for Jifun's standards. It may have taken the public a slow time to warm up to their concept shift, but it didn't stop fans from selling out the group's first fan meeting, Dear Buddy. 
The group also unveiled their first official light stick, called the Glass Marble Stick, a callback to the roots referring to both Jufren's debut song and the shape of the bulb. After fingertip promotions, Source Music realized Girl Crush wasn't in the cards for Jufren, or not just yet, and reverted back to their original concept. As the saying goes, if it's not broken, don't fix it. The group continued to pump out hit songs with the release of Love Whisper off their 50 EP Parallel and Summer Rain off their first repackaged album Rainbow. Jifren went back to basics with Love Whisper, an energetic song with the lovely melody Taylor made for the summer. For this song, the group worked with BTS's choreographer. He was able to make Jifren's already intense choreography much more difficult. The music video hit close to 8 million views in 24 hours, won 4 music show wins, and top real-time charts in Korea. The showcase also sold out in 30 seconds, proving how strong their ticketing power is. The following month, Jifun released Summer Rain off their repackaged album. is a sweet track that expresses the delicate emotions of someone in love. The lyrics compare love to summer rain, calling it beautiful yet unpredictable. At the end of the year, Jifun were crowned the best Korean act in 2017 at the MTV Europe Music Awards, the same category they were nominated for in 2015. While enjoying their popularity, many music experts question if Jifun can translate their success in other countries. This came at a time where Source Music was already in the talks with overseas agencies to handle Jifun's international promotions. In early 2018, the group started their year with their first solo concert, Seasons of Jifun, and were set to embark on the challenges of overseas promotions in Japan, signing with King Records. While preparing for their first solo concert, Source Music revealed the group's new official tour merch. Amongst their more conventional items like posters, pickets, and umbrellas, fans noticed one piece of merch that sparked a bit of controversy. In a post, life-size body pillows with the members printed on them were listed for sale. The life-size pillows were priced at 60,000 won, approximately $56 each. Voiced their concerns that the pillows reminded them of Japanese takimakuras or love pillows that usually depict animated characters or spicy actresses in suggestive poses. Naturally, many buddies were concerned and extremely upset as they felt the item didn't represent the girl group's pure and cute image and could potentially ruin their image as K-pop idols. Fans called for a boycott of Source Music, claiming the company was sexualizing the group members. Source Music immediately responded to the backlash and announced that they decided not to sell the pillows. Jifun went on to hold their first solo concert, Season of Jifun, making yet another personal achievement when their tickets sold out within three minutes. The members had a very fun time performing their songs and greatest hits, but as well, they opened up about their journey to becoming G-Friend. After their concert, the girls went back on a much-needed hiatus before returning back to the music scene. On April 30th, 2018, approximately seven months after their previous release, G-Friend made their much-anticipated return with their 6 EP, Time for the Moonlight. <laughs> Jifun's newest title track was unanimously picked as a title track by all six members. The lyrics express the emotions that come late at night, when the person you love comes to mind. The song shows that Jifun is maturing and now can portray more complex storylines in both their music and concept. In the second week of promotions, won first place on every music show with a chart system, making Jifun the first and only artist to achieve a Grand Slam in 2018. Jifren ended their promotions on May 20th, garnering a total of 10 trophies from all six music programs. It became the third among the group's lead singles with the most number of music wins, only behind Ruff and Navarella. They also became one of the girl groups to have the most appearances on Billboard's world album charts, alongside big names such as Girls' Generation and Twice. When the members were asked what they think is the reason for the song's popularity, they responded, Time for the Moonlight seems to be a song with something that touches your heart when you listen to it. Everyone probably feels different emotions, but we think that many people who like Time for the Moonlight are those who have felt something while listening to the song. If there are people who haven't felt anything yet, we hope you will listen to it one more time. The members also shared through these promotions, they wanted to widen their music and performance spectrums of G-Friend. In May, Jifun released their Japanese debut album with the Japanese version of Megusta Stum. The album peaked at number 10 on the Orikan Weekly Album Charts and officially began the Jifun wave in Japan. The group released their first Japanese single album, Memoria. The song debuted at number 6 on the Orikan Weekly Charts. 
and 5 on the Billboard Japan Weekly Top Single Sales. The song was also promoted in Korea with the Korean version. Just in time for summer, the girl group released the music video for Sunny Summer, which was the title track for their latest mini-album of the same name. <laughs> The video features the members of G-Friend enjoying their time in the summer, while their song lyrics are filled with cute puns that incorporate the members' names. With this single, netizens compared Sunny Summer to Sistar, who are well known as the Queens of Summer, for putting out hit songs perfect for the summertime. Now that Sistar disbanded, G-Friend replied, Please don't say that we will take their place or replace them. G-Friend is not a group that takes titles from others. In 2019, G-Friend brought us Sunrise off their second studio album Time For Us, Fever off their 7th EP Fever Seasons, and Fall In Light off of their first Japanese studio album, each single showing G-Friend's growth and maturity entering a new sophisticated era. Once again, G-Friend topped the charts with Sunrise and made it a memorable one as the song reached number one on their anniversary. For their Fever era, Jifun came back with their signature sharp choreography and went for a more trendy concept that was popular in the scene at the time. The group continued to take home music show awards and even swept some major awards at the end of the year award shows. In 2020, Jifun and Source Music made major headlines when big hit, now known as Hype Corporations, acquired Source Music. You know, that small company that produced global phenomena BTS and TXT. Just like Source Music, Big Hit had a similar story, a fairly small entertainment company just trying to make a name for themselves. However, now with their success, power, and money to back them up, Big Hit reorganized the system and became one of the biggest entertainment giants in South Korea. Now with a little extra pocket change, Big Hit went on a shopping spree and bought several companies, Source Music being one of them. Although Hive now owns Source Music, they still kept the majority of their original staff and executives to maintain the label's unique color and independence. To refresh your memory, the two CEOs are very good friends and once created the girl group Glam in 2012. Big Hit Entertainment's founder, Punk Shi Hyuk, remarked, Big Hit and Source Music ended up merging because they shared similar philosophies about the development and management of their artists. Because the two companies know each other very well, I expect this acquisition will be successful. At this time, Hype had no female artists under its roster. After the Glam scandal, Big Hit chose to no longer create girl groups, focus solely on boy groups. Having G-Friend under the Hive name was a big deal to say the least. Fans believe that now that G-Friend was under one of the biggest labels in the K-pop industry, their reach would only expand from here. From here on, G-Friend released Crossroads, Apple, and Mago to start off a new trilogy. G-Friend's 8th EP, Labyrinth, marked the group's first comeback since the acquisition of Source Music and the first part in their new trilogy. On February 3rd, G-Friend held a press conference to mark the release of their new mini-album. At the event, the members received questions on any changes or new experiences they've had since working under the Hybe label. As expected for a girl group under a major label, G-Friend received a total upgrade in their dorms. As for their music, since the conception of G-Friend, Punk Shi Hyuk has always been one of their biggest supporters. So for this album, Bang PD participated in writing the lyrics and producing the album, along with big hit producers and visual producers help with Labyrinth and their lead single Crossroads photos and videos. So once stated, we haven't met Punk Shi Hyuk yet, but he shared kind words with us through his agency staff. He said G-Friend has an irreplaceable charm that only G-Friend has, and I hope we can create more content that highlights that charm. He also said he would continue to support us both materially and monetarily. It gives us a lot of strength and motivated us to work harder. The album Lambrus tells the story of growing up into adulthood and struggling to figure out how to move forward. The album contains complicated feelings and stories that G-Friend wanted to tell their fans as they leave their innocent days behind. On February 3rd, Chief released their music video Crossroads. Chief and wowed the public with their signature sound and powerful choreography by creating an unforgettable performance that only they could do. Crossroads is a dance track with a powerful string sound and synth. The lyrics tell the story of a person feeling like they're at a crossroads when they have to make a choice, thinking about whether they will stay there or pick a direction and go forward. On February 10th, the Huntel charts announced that Chiefin had achieved their highest first week sales to date. According to the charts, the album sold over 53,000 copies in the week of its release, beating their personal record set by the girl group's previous album, Fever Season. Additionally, the album sold over 29,000 copies on the first day of its release, marking G-Friend's highest first day sales since their debut in 2015. 
Shefren took seven awards for Crossroads, making their total music show wins thus far 64. After another successful comeback, Jifren released their ninth EP, Song of the Sirens, supported by their title track, Apple, that was co-produced by Pang Shi Hyuk, alongside other big hit producers. Notably, Jifren members Unha and Yuju are also both credited as contributors to the song. draws inspiration from Snow White and the infamous Poison Apple. Jifren indeed has had many mesmerizing concepts, but this era was their most polarizing yet, and the best of their dramatic, glamorous looks. They took the somber, mystifying concept up a notch with their velvet outfits, thigh-high slits, and dark makeup. In this story, Jifren turns to the dark side by portraying witches. This drastic change adds a new dimension to their discography, showing how Jifren can push their boundaries and move out of their comfort zones with ease. When asked why they decided to undergo such a dramatic transformation for their comeback, Zulan said, We've been thinking about the need for change for a while. Although we've continued to grow and change till now, we didn't want small change this time. We wanted something that people would feel new from us. In the process of us and our agency talking about a new album, we all agreed that it was time for change. We have been worried about how this new look might surprise our fans, but we worked hard because we want to show we're a team with various different sides to us. Jifin has always been open-minded about the idea of change, not only in appearance, but with their participation in the music-making process. In addition to the title track, Apple, which was co-written and co-produced by Unhan Yuju, the two alongside Umji also contributed to tarot cards. Umji and Yuju also co-wrote the second track, Eye of the Storm. Yuju opened up about the song, which is about not losing oneself even when things get busy. She explained, it's a song based off a diary entry she wrote three or four years ago that was titled, Time of the Eye of the Hurricane. She wrote the diary entry when she was really busy and feeling a lot of pressure. In an interview with Elle magazine, they talked about how the group discussed with the staff about music, including thoughts about their past, present, and future of the group. The song was mainly inspired by the ups and downs of their lives. Just as usual, Jifren took home three music show awards for Apple, and the album itself peaked at number three on the Gan album charts. At the end of the year, Jifren released their third studio album, Walpurgis Night, which included their lead single, Mago. Title like Walpurgis Night, buddies frantically googled what the mysterious title meant. Many were overjoyed to read that Walpurgis Night is a German holiday where bonfires are lit to symbolize warding off evil spirits and witches. Many fans believed that Jifun would go for an even darker look, maybe even include a satanic ritual. However, their title track was anything but that. Mango is a dazzling retro drama of a song that gave the group a more colorful and fun-loving vibe, which is a stark contrast from their past melancholic concepts. The song is about becoming in charge of your own life and was written by several writers such as Pang Shi Hyuk, Unha, Yuju, and Omji, as long as several other artists. Member Yuju was also able to shine this comeback by showing off her pole dancing skills. The title track came out at a time when the disco trend was prominent in K-pop and more specifically for groups under the Hybe labels. Jifun were aware of this and hoped that Mago would be such a hit that they would become the frontrunners of this concept. The album also ended their new trilogy, which tells the story of a young girl who becomes a witch. After numerous decisions and temptations, she finally becomes able to look at herself through her own perspective, rather than through the views of others. Omji explained, The album is like a parfait that harmoniously combines everything together. It contains a wide variety of genres. Yunin compared this album to an extravagant end-of-the-year party, while Yuju described it as firework. Just like their 90 EP, Song of the Sirens, the members participated in all aspects of the album, from song production, concept, and overall design. They also included unit tracks for the first time since their debut. Yeren and Shinbi sang Secret Diary, while Soen and Umji teamed up for Better Me, and Yuju and Unha duetted on Night Drive. Wolpergus Night won over the public and had an overall positive response. Beat Per Minute called Wolpergus Night a bold, vibrant, and occasionally experimental album that finds Jifun shedding the melancholy of their previous two albums. With Mago, Jifun won three music show wins, and the album peaked at number three on the music charts. Jifren took a break after Mago promotions, but fans were excited to see what the next chapter of Jifren looked like. On May 18th, 2021, Jifren made one of their last updates. What was expected to be a comeback announcement was actually a goodbye. On the official Jifren Weavers account, the group released a statement that their contract would end on May 22nd, 2021. 
Source Music side continued to announce the cancellation and refund procedures for various GFRIEND events. The next day, on May 19th, GFRIEND members each posted a handwritten note on their Weverse community, apologizing for the sudden news and thanking their fans for their support. There was not much else said, which left a sour taste in their fans' mouths. Fans were upset with the sudden news and demanded Source Music to give a detailed explanation. The hashtag Source Music Explain and Statement trended on Twitter with an attached statement by Buddies, GFRIEND's fandom. A day before the announcement, a news agency, 10 Asia, reported GFRIEND may possibly disband due to failed contract negotiations. GFRIEND's disbandment announcement was revealed the next day. It officially happened on May 22, 2021. In April, it was reported that GFRIEND would return with a mini-album. In the same report, it was noted that GFRIEND was scheduled to have a new contract in the fourth financial quarter of 2021, somewhere between October and December. The report was made by Merit Securities, a Korea-based security company. The table is in fact a comeback prediction, made through an analysis of past trends. It is not an official schedule. Many pointed out that several GFRIEND members mentioned in the live stream a week prior to the 18th that the members often mentioned that, that they were actively practicing. Just the night before, Yuju had made a post stating that she had visited the practice room. A Twitter user further uploaded a clip with GFRIEND Sowan and Yuju who held a live stream on May 13, 2021. In it, they talked about changing their signature for their next album signing. There has always been a huge mystery as to why GFRIEND disbanded. Sure, contract issues were probably the biggest factor, but something just fell off with how abruptly the group dissolved. The group had always been massively successful, putting out consecutive hits, and many fans claimed that they hadn't even reached their peak yet. Turns out, the fans weren't the only ones stunned by the group's outcome. In 2022, the former members of GFRIEND started to speak out about the disbandment process and fans were finally able to get a clear picture as to why GFRIEND ended. Shinbi was one of the first to speak candidly about the situation. On an episode of Scan Vivi's, Shinbi confessed that she didn't know that Mago would be their last song together. She explained that GFRIEND had gone through a really tough time before the official announcement for their disbandment, sharing, we didn't know how to tell our fans we won't be promoting as a group anymore. GFRIEND won't be renewing our contracts. We weren't allowed to tell fans first before the company's announcement, so if you watch our VLive broadcast from about a month before the news, the members will suddenly start crying in the middle. There are clips of the members crying while watching videos of our fans cheering us on. We cried so much beforehand that I thought we wouldn't cry on the day the news articles about our disbandment were published, since we already cried so much. And when we all saw the news in the morning, we all came across our rooms crying at the same time, with tears running down our faces, even though I thought we wouldn't cry. Last year, we didn't show it in front of our fans, and we didn't show it during broadcast, but it was really, really tough year for all of us. I never imagined that I could cry so much during one year. I feel like I cried enough tears for an entire lifetime last year. GFRIEND's former leader Soan also echoed the same sentiments as Sunbi in an interview with Big Issue magazine. First of all, the other GFRIEND members and I didn't think the group as disbanded, but it is true that it was hard for me to accept the news. Because the news was so sudden, I'd always thought that I wanted to become an actress and start acting someday, but I never imagined that that time would be now. As we parted, I struggled a lot emotionally. But since I have to keep on living and forging a new path, I couldn't just keep struggling. But of course, it took quite a long time for me to accept the fact as reality. Now that it's been nearly a year, so the members have all accepted it and are adjusting to the new situation. To be honest, I think I'm the one who has had the hardest time adjusting. Both Soan and Shinbi expressed how saddened they were to hear GFRIEND were dissolving. This further fueled the conspiracies by fans that there was more to the story that, that Source Music slash Hype were trying to hide. It's been pointed out that Source Music accumulated $25.7 million in debt, according to Hype's 2020 financial reports, and owed $6.6 million a big hit. Was GFRIEND disbanded because they were not performing as well as expected? Or was the agency trying to make room and use all their resources on Source's new girl group? There isn't a satisfying answer and we still may never know what exactly happened unless the former members continue to speak out. Through a report, it was also revealed that Source Music had applied for a trademark for the word GFRIEND. On March 11, 2021, fans were confused as to why the trademark was applied for when the group disbanded two months later. However, the trademark has since been rejected. Some keen fans have also noted that the application were made multiple times. 
According to the Korean Intellectual Property Protection Agency, the first reason for the rejection was the trademark G-Friend is identical to the English name for the six-member South Korean girl group G-Friend and cannot be trademarked. The second reason for rejection, the trademark G-Friend is directly affiliated with the six-member South Korean girl group G-Friend, noticeably identifiable by general consumers, and thus the use of the trademark by the applicant for the product, by the applicant for product use, can cause misconceptions, raising the potential for the deception of consumers. As a result, G-Friend members Soan, Yeren, Ngha, Yuju, Shinbi, and Omji can continue to use the name G-Friend in any form, including if they wish to reunite and release an album or appear as a team on TV broadcasts. Many netizens are now applauding the KOIPA's decision and are celebrating the victory for G-Friend and their fans. Six months after their disbandment, G-Friend made one final performance as wedding singers for their stylist. Several videos from all different angles were posted as the six members sang their second single, Me Gustas Tu. The song was a rush of nostalgia for the members, especially Yeren, who couldn't help but wipe away her flowing tears. However, it wasn't just Yeren and the members who felt the massive wave of emotions, but buddies also expressed the same sentiment. It was a very special moment for the fandom to see them perform together, but also to hear the group introduce themselves as G-Friend one last time. Although we wish we could see more of G-Friend, they are on to new beginnings and bigger adventures. On June 16, 2021, Yeren signed with Sublime Artist Agency, the home of Rain and Got Seven's Young Jane. In May 2022, Yeren debuted as a soloist with her debut album, Adia. On August 1, 2021, Soan signed an exclusive contract with B.I. and Alice's agency, IOK Company, as an actress and is now going by her legal name, Kim So Jung. It was also revealed that she would be the main actress for an upcoming film drama series, Chilling Together, with Chan Woo from Icon as the main actor. A drama version for the film would also air on various OTT platforms after the film's release. However, it seems as if Soan has recently ended her contract with the company, as she is no longer featured on the artist list under their website and is no longer followed by the company's IG account. It looks like Soan only signed a one-year contract to test the waters and is probably in the talks with some new agencies. Fans hope that she will sign with BPM, BB's company, to reunite with her former members, but we'll just have to wait and see. On September 1st, 2021, Yuja joined Kanak Entertainment, Kang Daniel's company. On January 18th, 2021, Yuja made her solo debut with Play off her first mini album Rep. <laughs> She also recently released Evening on July 28th, which features Big Naughty. As for the remaining three members, Shinbi, Unha, and Omji, they signed with BPM Entertainment. The group debuted as VVs on February 9th, 2022, with their single Bop Bop off their first EP, Beam of Prism. <laughs> Even after Jifin's activities ended and went their separate ways, the members of Vivi still consider Soan as their leader. They believe all the members will get back together one day, so there is no need to choose another leader. They have since released a second single titled Love Aid and participated on the competition show Queen of Two, placing third overall. Jifin showed the world that if you have the passion, talent, and work hard enough, then you can make your dream come true no matter where you start from. Hopefully we get to see Jifin shine together at 6 someday, but until then, I wish them all the love and support. And with that being said, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay.